Good morning and welcome to online worship here at Sharon United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pete Harris and I greet you in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sharon Church is located out on the corner of M52 and Pleasant Lake Road, just uh, north of the village of Manchester in western Washtenaw County. And if you ever have the opportunity to visit us on a Sunday morning, we gather for worship 1030. We'd, we'd be pleased to welcome you. If you go to our website, it's right there. There you're going to learn about our ministry and the mission that God has us engaged with with our community. Lots of good information there. If you look up here, I think there's a drop down menu that shows how you can contact us, particularly if you have a prayer request. Every week we have a dedicated group of folks who collect up the prayer requests of the week, the prayer requests of the church. And then together we bring them before the Lord and we'd be welcome to, uh, we'd be pleased to take your prayer request this week before the Lord. Christmas Eve is coming upon us, and uh, here online we will have a very special presentation of carols and readings that tell the story of how God emptied himself, as St. Paul says, poured himself out, took on the form of a human being, born to Mary, born in Bethlehem. For those in person on December 24th, We'll be meeting here in the Fellowship Hall for a very special, uh, unusual Christmas Eve service as we gather around the manger and we hear the glorious good news. God has come to us, our Lord Emmanuel. There's other things going on and uh, we just invite you to uh, stay tuned as they say. Hey, if you haven't contacted us, there's a place to do that as well off the website. We'd love to hear from you. Love to hear what God is doing in your life. And, and if you'd like to get newsletters and other communications, that's one way we can stay connected. We're pleased to have this time. And so let us get ready to uh, go into our time of worship. I invite you uh, to have a Bible handy as we begin. Michelle McCullough, our lay leader here, comes and leads us in our call to worship from Psalm 80. Psalm 80, 1 through 3. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock, you who sat enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephra, Benjamin, and Masada. Awaken your mighty, come and save us. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. Thank you, Michelle, for that reading. And now listen, friends, to this wonderful Christmas carol, Love Came Down at Christmas. I invite you to join with me in this moment of prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence, our ears to hear your life-giving message, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be the name of God. Blessed be Father and Son and Holy Spirit. 
Amen and amen. I invite you now to take your Bible and join with me in the reading of the Gospel. We're at chapter 1 of St. Luke's Gospel. We're beginning at verse 26 and reading down through verse 45. Listen now for the word of the Lord. It was in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy that God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he'll reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary said, how, how can this be, since I'm a virgin? And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is now in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and she hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Amen and amen. <clears throat> we are in um, the fourth week leading up to Christmas, this holy season of Advent. And this week I got asked a question that I have to admit stumped me just a little bit. You see, next year, I'm going to retire. And the question was, so when you retire, what will be your zip code? See, somebody wanted to know, where are you going to be? And how, how will we know that? What's the zip code of your new house at retirement? I thought about it. I think I know my address but I don't have it memorized. I don't know what the zip code is. We were just told from St. Luke, it was in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy when an angel appeared, the Gabriel. He came to a particular zip code. It was in the north. It was in Galilee. It was in the town of Nazareth. And so as we learned in our series on the um, some weeks back, during the summer, we did a series on each of the first followers of Jesus. And we remember in, in how uh, Philip was, uh, went to his best friend, Nathaniel, and he said, you got to come and see this, this rabbi, this Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathaniel, you remember the, the famous words? Well, Nathaniel said, Nazareth? Are you kidding? Because he knew no great prophet had ever come from Nazareth. No great king had ever been born there. Are you kidding? What good comes from Nazareth? What's the zip code of Nazareth? Well, 
Maybe that was the question even Gabriel wanted to know. Um, but God said, go. And so the angel went. And so a vir to a virgin named Mary, Gabriel came and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. In that modern translation called The Message, Eugene Peterson, he tells us that Gabriel said to Mary, Good morning, you're beautiful with God's beauty. Beautiful inside and out. God be with you to an insignificant town, Gabriel came with an announcement that was to startle all of heaven and impact greatly the earth. Did you hear how, what Mary's reaction was? She was greatly troubled at the words of the angel, thoroughly shaken, wondered, wondering what kind of greeting, what was behind this greeting that started like that. Interestingly, though, what struck me was it's not the sudden appearance of a, of a heavenly being. No. It was what he said. I, I don't know about you, friend. Have you ever been visited by some angelic being? I would guess most of us know. And, and I would guess if it happened that, that, that most of us would find the presence of some heavenly being suddenly appearing before us, it would strike terror in our hearts, kind of like, kind of like the guards at the, at the tomb of when Jesus was resurrected. Matthew tells us the story that when the angel appeared, the guards fainted as dead away. What about the, you remember the story when the tribes of Israel were out in the wilderness and they gathered there at, at Mount Sinai and there was great thunder and, and great lightning and terror gripped the hearts of, of everyone. Greatly troubled, thoroughly shaken. Mary says, what's the message? What's this angel saying? Why would a messenger of God, Gabriel, one of, the most, one of the more famous named angels of all the Bible, why would he come to a young woman in an out-of-the-way place like Nazareth? One commentator writes from her socioeconomic level, from her gender, even her age, to her life experience thus far. There, there are so many reasons to doubt the sincerity of the angel's greeting and perhaps not understand it at all by Mary. Throughout these weeks of leading up to Christmas in this Advent season, we've been talking about how Advent is the, is the movement of, of waking up, that we're to awake, awake to hope, awake to peace, awake to joy, awake to love, awake to the movement of what God desires, of what God wants us to know in the coming of Jesus Christ. For God comes to us. He comes to us with great love. He comes to us in love to tell us that, in fact, my brothers and sisters, you are loved by God. But more than being loved by God, then God has a purpose for your life to send you forth that you might, that you might love others, equipped with the life-giving power of God's Holy Spirit. Our focus for these weeks leading up to Christmas has been found in, from Paul's encouragement in Romans 13. Make sure that you don't get absorbed and exhausted and taking care of all your day-by-day day day obligations, he writes, that you lose track of the time, you, you doze off, oblivious to God. The night's about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing, he says. God is putting the finishing touches on your salvation that he began when you first believed. Be awake. Be awake to what God is doing. For Mary, the one possibility that, that doesn't occur to her at all until Gabriel continues, 
is that God, God is very serious. She's favored by God. God is with her. Here's a question. Do you believe that God is still at work in the world? Do you believe that God is still active? That God is present today? I mean, after the past year, you can understand how many struggle with the idea that, that God is present. Let alone that in God's presence, there is hope and peace and joy and love. But we're leading up to this most profound message of all that God comes to love us. That in God's presence, we discover not only that we are loved, but that we are given what we need in order to tell others. To tell others, look, God loves you. It's a simple message. It's the message of the age. We want you to awaken to God. Awake to love. Awake to the life-giving power that flows from God so that to those who find God a stranger, they may find in you a generous friend. You might even become an angel in disguise, a messenger of God. You come and say, you are loved. Fear not. But let me move a little closer, friend. Are you awake to God loving you? I mean, it's difficult. It's difficult some days. There's so many, so many other thoughts that go through our minds, so many feelings that, that storm across our hearts, messages that numb, dissuade, confuse us to the idea that God is present and that God is at work, God is active. And so maybe we're the ones who need to hear today, Hail, O favored one, God is with you. You have nothing to fear. Greetings. I mean, to be, to be favored by God, declared beautiful inside and, and beautiful outside and beautiful with God's beauty within. I love that line. To suddenly, suddenly find yourselves in the in the presence of the living God, and to experience being present to this great love that God has for you. You know what it means? It means that the fear of, the fear of never quite measuring up to a supposed potential, that's banished. The hope of God's active and good will working in the world and working in your situation, working in your life, it's restored. There's peace, waking up to peace, peace flowing as a river, washing and, and cleansing out all of the chaos, the, the muddled and the befuddled messages of our lives, peace of a, of a deep, deep well of serenity, that the old way no longer need to be pursued. No, something new is being revealed. Something new is unfolding in your presence. In fact, it's unfolding within you to awake to the joy that is ours, rising, rising like the dawn of a new day, displacing the sadness of so much loss of this past year, the deep sense that, that all God has done has been for this moment, for this year. It's the freedom the freedom that comes to know that you've been on the wrong way and now you get to turn around and you get to head home. You get to head back, head back to God. And then to awake, awake to a love that doesn't require better effort or, or greater accomplishment or even the manufacture of some great faith. No, it's just the quiet resting and the assurance that God, God is beckoning you. He's inviting you closer than ever before. See, it's that moment when you, when you do that careful listening in the silence of your heart to hear the steady heartbeat of God, God's love, God's acceptance. God loves you through the one who is Christ the Lord, the Son of the Most High. To be favored to be favored. Hear the great assurance that you have nothing 
of to afraid to be afraid of when it comes to God and for God's purpose on your life. I mean, could friends, could this be what what these days of Advent leading up to Christmas are all about? To be awakened to the memory and the story of what God has done and what God is doing today and the promises that God God is going to be acting in the days yet ahead, working in, working through your life with the power of his love, active, engaging with others. It's a simple message of this Sunday. This message, God is with us and God is for us. Look, I know, I know there, there's... There seems to be so much in life suggesting that that this just isn't true, that this this can't be true. It'll never be true. And there's such great confusion caused by, by such suggestions. And what happens? It, it colors our view of ourselves. It's like we put on different lenses and Not only do we see ourselves differently, we see our neighbor differently. If you only knew who was speaking to you, if you only knew who you were speaking to, that is the presence of God. God, are you at work? I mean, is it even possible? You know what God says? I'm working. I'm speaking to one of my beloved children right now. God says, I love you. I love you and will be with you today and I will be with you tomorrow and all the tomorrows yet to come for I love you. And with Mary, we say, how? How is this going to happen? How do we come into the presence of a God who loves us so much? It seems... It seems so impossible. The gospel doesn't say it this way, but I imagine that Gabriel Gabriel whispered at this moment. He didn't didn't want to confuse or confound. He didn't want to embarrass or, or, or shame. No, he just wanted to affirm Mary and say nothing. Nothing's impossible with God. Nothing's impossible. I know. I know the circumstances seem impossible, but nothing's impossible with God. I know the situation is is overwhelming. It's not. the, the, The fact that God can be at work, active, engaging right now, it's not impossible. J.D. Walt in our Advent study from seedbed.com, we've been working through a wonderful study. He says, the bottom line today is God knows your zip code. He has your zip code. Whether you're in a small town or in a village or out in a rural area like here, or whether you're in the big city, God has your zip code. He comes to where you are. How can God act? Because it's not what we do, it's what God is doing. Just remember, faith says, and faith hears, and says yes, yes, before the assignment comes. What did Mary say? May it be done. She says yes to the angel's message. She says yes to God before anything happens. Faith says nothing, nothing will be impossible with God. It's prayer that then says, let it be according to your word. Faith says, nothing will be impossible with God. Prayer says, let it be according to your word. See, it comes down to faith and prayer. Advent, these weeks leading up to Christmas, is a time to start practicing faith and prayer, to awaken to the love of God in Jesus Christ. For God comes, he greets you saying, Good morning. You are beautiful with God's beauty. Beautiful inside and out. God is with you. Nothing 
is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Faith and prayer. Let it be according to your word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. We have a time set aside always to respond to God. When we listen to his word, we come into his presence to listen and then in listening to respond. And so I invite you to come with me now in a time of prayer. Loving God, as we draw closer and closer to the day of Christ's birth, Lord, help us to, to throw wide the, uh, the doors of our hearts in preparation. Help us to sense the importance of, of that event that happened so long ago when Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel, to remember the words of the angel, <clears throat> to remember the words of prophets and teachers of old, to celebrate all the promises that you made through them. Lord, help us. Help us to take firm hold of the meaning of all these things and to know in the depths of our hearts, the very depth of our being, that even now, even now you're, you're seeking to work in us and through us to fulfill the promises you have made. Lord, we gather and we come into your presence. Hear our prayer. May this Christmas season be for us and for those around us a true season of healing. May it be a season of hope and joy and love and peace. May it be a time of true sharing and of rejoicing in all of the earth. And so it is, Lord, we ask you to pay attention, to be present to those in need, those we know of, those who are around us those who need a second birth, those who have been traveling the wrong road and need to, need to be uh, turned around. Lord, come on to them. May, may the people who, may the person who hears nothing but confusion in their minds, may they hear the clear message of how you love them and how with you there is nothing to be feared. We pray, Lord, for those who need a tender touch, a healing word in their mind, in their spirit, and in their body. Lord, we pray for the children of our world. To all those of tender faith, all those who have no home to call their home, those who are hungry, those who are thirsty. Lord, we Pray that you would bless the innocent of the earth and all those who trust in you. Bless the humble and the powerless and bring down from their thrones those who are full of pride and those who are indifferent. Lord, we pray for the vulnerable ones, remembering those especially in prison. We recall to your attention and pray, Lord, that you would work to release Paul Whelan and bring him home, Trevor Reed and bring him home. We're so thankful, Lord, for how you acted through your human agents, releasing of all the missionaries in Haiti. We rejoice in that, Lord. And we pray that those who find themselves in great trial and tribulation, whether it's in Haiti and our partners at Nizak, whether it's in the Congo and our partner with Pastor Kor, whether it's in Nigeria or China or any place your children gather, Lord, May they know your presence, and may they be blessed in these days. But Lord, it, we want to bring before you now the one that's, that we carry closest to our heart, our family, our friends, our neighbor. Lord, to each special one we name before you, bring healing and your peace. Bring deliverance and justice. Bring your help. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. For we trust you. 
We know that even now you're at work and we rejoice. We rejoice in the fact that you're working for good in our world today. And so, Lord, we pray in your powerful name, remembering how you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Friends, we're glad that we've had this time together. And we look forward to a time when we can meet and greet each other face to face. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen.